Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today our artistic journey brings us to designing either slideshows or digital PDF photo books so you can show off your masterworks, your beautiful pictures to your friends, maybe even to your customers. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you for that, let's get started right away. So in this video, I want to give you some easy design tricks to make things look good. You see three of the tricks right here on the screen right now. So one of the tricks is to use odd shapes for your pictures. As you can see here, I have created a mask. I will show you in a second how to do that. A mask and I have put the pictures in there. Of course, this only works with pictures who look nice in a vertical cut, in a vertical crop. Um, so you can use them. Not every picture can be used like that. You can also pair them in odd numbers, like three, for example, which also looks nice. It has a nice feeling. Another trick that you can see here is that I'm using a pattern as a background. You can get them for free online, especially for personal use. For example, freepick.com is a page where I found these, these designs here. I didn't even alter this one, for example. I just set the layer to color burn so it's getting darker and I will show you in a second how to do that. Don't worry about that. The third trick is that you select a color from the picture and make that the color of the background. So you get more emotion and feeling into the page and it doesn't look as rough. Especially you have these kind of designs pattern in the background, which are done by designers. So they look great on their own. Okay, so let's go over this design. I prepared, by the way, three different designs we will go through today. So you can see here, if I turn off my mask, I simply have this, a normal picture. Let's uh, copy this picture here real quick on its own layer bring it out like this. And then the only thing you have to do, I'm talking about affinity photo here, um, is that you put that image into a group. So control G to put it into a group like that. And then go here to your rectangle tool and make a rectangle. This has a different fill color so we can see it nicely. You can give it any color you want. That doesn't really matter. You can do it like this so we can really see where that is. And then you just push it over the picture any way you want, any size you want. And you just put the layer with the rectangle over the group with the picture you just created and then right click and you select mask to below. Boom, like this. And the reason why I put it into a group before I did that is because now I can click on this little triangle here and I can still select the image and move it around freely. And I can also still click on the rectangle and resize that any way, any shape, any form I like. You need to make sure you can see here is the border of our rectangle that the rectangle is fully covered. Otherwise, um, you would have different size rectangles when you put pictures in the different other masks that you create like that. So now that you've created that, you can simply hold control, click and pull over to create uh, two more of those. It's very simple. Then you can select all three of these groups. So click on the upper group and then shift, hold shift, click on the lower group. So you select all three of these group layers. Go up here to the right and then to space horizontally. So it's evenly spaced. You can see here the middle one jumped a little bit to the left and you can also say align vertically. So this is aligned on the same height. You click on OK. And now you have three times the same picture, of course, but you can, of course, now go to the individual groups and just replace the picture while the group stays the same. So that's pretty easy to do. And you can see like you can do some really nice designs with that. OK, so now I want to give you an advice about the background, background color. So I have created a rectangle that is over all of the background. Again, of course, take your rectangle tool, just click and drag it over all of the background. So how do you find a good color? I would suggest you use a color that is existent in one of the pictures and then you adapt it a little bit. So click here 
on the fill up here for rectangle. Le rectangle layer needs to be selected, by the way. Click here. There you have your um, color picker. So click and then select some color here. You can go and just pick different colors and see, do they give a nice harmony? For example, you can see when you have a darker color, the colors in the picture look more intense, while when I have a lighter color as a background, the colors and the contrast in the pictures look less intense. So think about that, what you want to have there. And then what I would suggest is you go over to the RGB slider. This is for screen design. If you do a slideshow, if you do an ebook that you watch on your screen and you can see here by just moving these a little bit, you can probably find some color that is very interesting and looks good on your screen, on your devices, stuff like that. So you can play around with that. Like I said in another video, exercise really improves your skill and your taste. So do a bunch of these, not just one and then be finished, but just over time, keep doing exercises. You don't have to keep them, see what other designers do, how they combine the colors, stuff like that. Okay, so I will delete that background so we can see the original background that I chose. It's a little bit lighter, as you can see. And with the text, I combine a fancy font uh, with a not so fancy font because otherwise it's getting a bit overloaded. Like this one here, what's this, Arial? Very, just a simple Arial font. And up here we have kind of these hand-painted, hand-drawn fonts that I like very much. It's called Ballad Harmony. Very nice, very cute. So this alone is nice, but I think there could be a little bit more. And this is why I thought, hey, some hand-drawn backgrounds of Italian kind of lifestyle feeling, so olive oil, olive leaves. Um, let's just take a design from the internet, boom, and put it in the background. And I didn't even change anything here. So you can see if you look at the original, it looks like this. We can even double click um, to open it up because it's just an EPS file. So you can see here, that's that. It's just an EPS file. The reason why I can use it with color burn is because it has a, a, a light background and then dark drawing. So the light background kind of vanishes, not completely, which is okay here um, because you can see if I set this to color burn, um, there it is. It makes the blue a little bit darker and I get a little bit of a border here between the part where the text is, which is a little bit lighter now, and the part where the pictures are, which is a little bit darker now, which is okay to bring out the colors of the picture. So I didn't have to do anything. Just drag in the EPS file and EPS is a vector. So I can resize this any size I want. It's not gonna get pixelated. So that's also very, very nice to have. Let's go to the second design. I would say, look at some other tricks I'm using here. So you can see this time I have a beautiful picture that I wanna show as big as possible. On the left side, we have a little bit of seaside. So I thought, well, we can use that place to maybe add some text. And again, I used some design background from the internet, abstract design, just to make it a little, little bit more fancy, a little bit more cute. This is, by the way, not blended at all. It's just this is the blue that came with the uh, with the design from FreePick. So this is the design, as you can see. Boom, just like that. The blue was already good enough. And I like that it has this kind of radial gradient that is going through the background. So also a nice trick using gradients to make the background come alive a little bit more, look a bit more designed. And you can see here that um, there is a mirror effect in the design. So this is why I tried to put the mirror effect here in the center of the height of my picture. Okay, and then I just added a box for my text and I added text in here. The text color I'm using is not completely black, it's gray. Because you can see here, let's go to um, our grayness settings. If I use complete black, uh, that looks very harsh. It looks very hard. And you want it to be like soft and feeling nice and kind of nice to the eyes. Uh, so you can try to soften that by going to gray and see like not too light. So you can't read it anymore in a way where you can still read it, but it looks nice. It looks soft to the eye and cute. And then also adjust uh, the other text 
By the way, in this case, also to point out, you can see the text here is smaller, so it means the lines are thinner. So when you use the exact same gray, it can be that the text that is smaller and with thinner lines looks brighter because of the thinner lines. So you maybe want to adapt that, uh, click in here and adjust the font color until you're satisfied and you have the feeling that it looks the same. Let's go on to the third design that we have here. I selected a picture that can possibly be used as a panorama. So it's, it's not a panorama per se, but I cut it in the same way I did before, putting it in a group, then creating a rectangle, then click, right click and click on mask below to create that mask. So you can see here we have our picture. And if I turn off the rectangle, you can see that actually the shape of the picture is completely different. Um, you can, of course, use it full size if you want to. So that's really up to you. The idea here is, and this is, by the way, uh, something you should keep in mind when you take the photos during your holidays. Don't just take pictures of the scenery. Also take pictures of the details of the things that are happening around you. Think like a person who is doing a film. For example, in this case, I made a little bit of a stripe here. So we have the market, we have the wine, we have some pizza and you have a panorama of the city and then you have these little things of what happened during the day as story bits that you can combine in your mind to a film about, oh, okay, this was the first day. You were in a beautiful city. You had some nice food. You went to a market and everything happens together and your brain combines it into a story. Again, I used a pattern in the background. This time it's very slight, as you can see here down there. I can make it brighter so you can see it. You can see there's some olive leaves again. I did something special here. Uh, you can see that this is fading. Let's really do this real quick so you can see what I'm actually doing. So I'm creating a rectangle as you can see here. And then I am creating a gradient over the rectangle. The colors don't really matter uh, in this case. What really matters is that you set this up so that one color has the opacity zero. As you can see, now it's fading out to one side. And now if you right click and mask this, we can mask this, for example, onto our picture. Let's put this on here, hide the other part. I will mask this to below. And you can see now that this is fading out the picture to the right and you can still adjust your um, gradient in the way it fades. I'm not using it for a picture, so I know this looks kind of strange now, shouldn't be used like that. Um, I'm using it for our background. So let's delete this real quick again, turn this on. And you can see now that I have here my background elements. Let's make them brighter again so we can see them better and hide this part. You can see that I have here um, my gradient inside of the rectangle. You can zoom out a little bit so we see everything and I can move that around any way I want, in any direction I want, um, as long as, of course, the rectangle is covering all of my background. You can see I can really um, adjust the design any, any way I feel like. So this can be a very, very nice element to add just a touch of design to the background and not make it too harsh or have any other kind of edges inside of the design. Okay. So these have been some design ideas that you can use. One last thing I want to point out, if you want to print this, you will probably fold the book somewhere in the middle or exactly in the middle. So the design should pay respect to that. Don't put important elements into the middle. So most of my designs for today have been done for the screen. You would do them differently for print. I want to point that out. So for example, here, the most interesting, important building is exactly where you would fold the paper. This wouldn't work. You can see that this third is sticking into the middle of the page where you would fold again. So this wouldn't work. You have to look out for that. Um, but I think a lot of people or maybe most people today would rather look at a picture on their large screen. So have a slideshow or have a PDF rather than print it, which is very expensive. I would rather suggest to make it for the screen. Okay, leave a like if you enjoyed the episode or share it with your friends. And thanks for watching. See you in the next episode. Have a nice day. Bye.